here is a Uniden DECT6 telephone with Digitan answering system. This is a D1780. There's the other information. Takes in the AC, the 8 volts, which is a completely ridiculous and non standard adapter. And it can take up to 12 handsets. As far as I know it, this was the last model that Uniden sold here in the US. And uh, I have pretty mixed opinions about it. There's a bunch of things I like about it over the 1580. The answering machine has a bunch more features that you can access from the handset. You can see the little message counter thing down there at the bottom. And I believe the date and time stays more than it does on the 1580. Let's just go ahead and set that so we can see. I have no idea what the date is. I have no idea what the time is. Yeah, so like when you go on onto phone mode, the t the clock is still there. The the clock and the date are there all the time. I really like that a lot. And you got the signal meter at the top. So it definitely has a a bunch more simple features than the 1580 does and of course the additional six handsets for a total of 12 is nice. It also utilized a nickel metal hydride battery. This is the one that it came with which is all blurry. There it is. This is the BT1021 and it is the nickel metal hydride and it is also 2.4 volts at the 300 milliamps. It's from 2012 made by the core walk. I haven't checked this yet and I don't have any reason to. I have other ones that are newer and working just fine. But um, some people would argue that the nickel metal hydride battery was better. In theory it is, but this is the AAA cell pack whereas the 1580 takes the AA cell pack and so even though those ship with nickel cadmium you can buy a, a nice high capacity metal hydride replacement whereas you really can't do that with these these small AAA packs the highest I've ever seen will come is 900 I think uh, I think I've seen them 900 milliamps whereas the uh, AA packs you can get up to 1800 or so easily so Anyways, uh, I also think that the handset feels kind of cheap compared to the 1580, the buttons I don't, I don't like the way these buttons are, they don't press that nice and this is just kind of weird, it's like a bar and the base is super hollow and extremely lightweight, I really don't like this non-standard power cord, you know for decades you didn't use standard 6 volt DC, 9 volt DC, very typical sizes. And then towards the end here, they used all these funny adapters, funny voltages, funny sizes. It's going to be pretty much impossible to replace this power adapter if it ever goes out. This is the power adapter. It is the AC adapter. PS-0035. Which at least they used on quite a few models. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and call this thing up. It looks like the ring is off. So we'll go ahead and turn the ring on because we should always have ringers on. The ringer was changed. It's kind of unusual. The base ringer was off. Now it is the on. Okay, let's go ahead and call this thing up.
Okay, looks like that's working. Let's begin by going to the outside line and let's make a call to hear what the audio clarity is like. The numerical buttons aren't too bad. They're very, the font is very good, very clear, easy to read. The backlighting is pretty bright. But I really don't like these talk and end buttons and the speakerphone and whatnot. Color after the heavy rain. They're not listed in the new phone book. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. Smoke poured out of every crack. Serve the hot rum to the tired heroes. Those words were the cue for the actor to leave. A yacht slid around the point into the bay. The place seems dull and quite stupid. Thieves who rob friends deserve jail. All right, that's pretty clear. Now I'll take a listen to the earpiece. The saw is a tool used for making boards. The wagon moved on well-oiled wheels. Try to have the court decide the case. They are pushed back each time they attack. The box was thrown beside the parked truck. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Much of the story makes... I think that sounds pretty good. It's very, very clear. That's almost like corded phone quality. Very rich sound, very clear. Not bad. And that was all the way up, uh, all the way up, and there's still no distortion at all. Hmm. Not bad. Very good audio quality. Okay. Hmm. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised by that. One of the other things I don't like about this model is the layout of the of the menu. It only gets two lines of text, whereas the 1580 got three. And then, once you're in there, it's only one. And then, uh, it just, I don't know, to me, I, I like this one. I liked having the menu full screen and being able to see the different options. You know, having off and on be displayed. To me, that's just a little bit clearer and easier to navigate, whereas this, it's... I mean, it's showing you the information that you need, but I just prefer prefer the layout of this one. All right, so let's take a look at this answering machine here. That's working fine. Um, no messages. No messages. That goes up to ten. No messages. No messages. Alright, let's record a, uh... Well, actually, we'll leave the default reading for now. Let's see what kind of settings we have on the answering machine. Huh, that was changed as well. We'll do two times for the video. That's default. Was very clear as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and call this up and I'll record a message into there. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Where are you? Why are you not there to take my call to tell you something important? 
call me to my home phone. Goodbye. It's taking a long time to release the line, but it has released the line. And you can see on the standby screen we have a bunch of information here. We have how many messages there are, the fact that the unit is on, and that we have new messages. Oh, as far as the caller ID goes, it's stored in the base on this unit. So the drawback is it takes a little bit longer to open it up and scroll through it, but the advantage over the 1580 is that if you clear it out on one handset, it's cleared out on all of the handsets. That is one of the few things that I really am bothered by in the 1580 is that the, the, the uh, call log is not synchronized for the handset, so you can scroll through it faster, but when you clear the log on one, it's still on the others, so you kind of lose track of how many calls you have, or if you had new ones. One message. Where are you? Why are you not there to take my call to tell you something important? Call me to my home phone. Clyde. End of messages. That sounded like pretty average quality to me for a Digitan machine, if not slightly above average. Alright, let's go ahead and record a greeting. Hello, this is Frank the Electrician. If you need something wired, leave a message or I'm not calling you back. Hello, this is Frank the Electrician. If you need something wired, leave a message or I'm not calling you back. You know what? I think that's above average quality. That sounded pretty good. Well, for a Digitan unit anyways. It's nowhere near tape quality, but it's not bad. Hello, this is Frank the Electrician. If you need something wired, leave a message or I'm not calling you back. Hello, this is Bob Smith. I live on 123 40th Street. Last night a skunk sprayed my electrical panel. It's a new 200 amp electrical panel and now it stinks. So I was wondering if you could come replace all the breakers with the ones that don't stink. You can call me at 555-6789 and record a message into my Digitan answering machine. And I'm just noticing that this cord is all jacked up here. There we go. That's better. Oh, there's a bolt over here. Huh. Okay. Now I'll play back the message from the handset Oh, it's got its own soft key on here. It's the button down here at the bottom. Tuesday, 4.32 p.m. One new message and one old message. Hello, this is Bob Smith. I live on 123 40th Street. Last night a skunk sprayed my electrical panel. It's a new 200 amp electrical panel and now it stinks. So I was wondering if you could come replace all the breakers with ones that don't stink. You can call me at 555-6789 and record a message into my Digitan answering machine. Tuesday, 4.31 p.m. End of messages. Old. Two. Messages. Where are 
are you? Who are you? Hello, this end of messages. The display Rio is really good on this model. It's got a lot of good information on it. Okay, so those messages were not bad. I mean, it's only Digitan recording, so it's not going to sound particularly clear, but it's definitely not the worst one I've seen at all. That was, uh, those messages were completely able to be understood with ease. Okay, now I will call and record some testing messages into the testing answering machine. Four new messages and two old messages. Message one. Okay, here we go. Here it is. This is the first official testing message from the Uniden D 1780 Digitan cordless telephone. I have to say I'm very impressed by the audio quality on this telephone. The clarity of both the incoming audio on the speakerphone and the earpiece is exceptional. And I don't believe that this was really intended to be a necessarily a cheap phone. I believe it was the last one that Unit had sold here in the US and they were certainly into the era where they started to cut corners but I think, for example, the Uniden 1580 was more of an economy model than this was. And I guess being from 2012, there would have been some overlap in the, uh, in the sale of the models because I do believe that the 1580 sold up until 2012. It's really surprising how popular it was considering that it had a pretty short run. I think it was only on a market from 2009 through 2012. And yet those phones were everywhere for several years. Very good model, very popular, very inexpensive, and very good performance. So now we have this one, which uh, was probably considerably more expensive than the 1580 and it also had a bunch of different variants to it I know there was also the 1760 which had no digital answering machine and there was also a Bluetooth model which was the BT 1780 maybe instead of D 1780 I don't remember for certain what the model number was, but that was a pretty good phone. In fact, of all the Bluetooth cordless phones I've used, the Bluetooth range on that model was exceptional. It, it could work from all the way across the house, the Bluetooth could, whereas a lot of the Panasonic models, even though they offer more features, I find the range is extremely limited and sometimes won't even span beyond one wall or, or the rum at all. So I think there also was probably a, a, a 1788 which had the answer machine and the speaker phone on the base. And there might have been a, a 1785 that had a corded handset base. Or maybe those two models I'm getting mixed up. I don't remember. I know there was definitely a 1685 and a 1688. I wasn't too fond of the 1600 series. It did have a lot of the features I like on this one as far as the display is concerned, but I didn't seem like the or it didn't seem like the quality was very good, and a lot of those seem to break. I've seen more of those failed than pretty much any other cordless phone from the era so I don't know they really kind of slipped on those the PC board just weren't very good I guess but I haven't really seen that problem with the 1700 series it seems to be just fine and speaking of just fine message two well as I was saying before this rude digitan machine cut me off speaking of just fine 
I am now all the way across the room, or the, the basement, and it seems like the signal is still clear. It's not on the ecology mode anymore, but I think it's still clear. Okay, so I'm going to roam back into the studio now, and I'll let you know when the ecology mode comes back on. Still not on. Still not on. It's still not on. Now, I just entered into the studio. So now we're about 12 feet away from the base line of sight, and the ecology mode just came back on. So... It only seems to work within a very short distance, but that's perfectly fine. All right, now I'm going to switch to the speakerphone. And now it's on the speakerphone, and I'm speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was before. So this will give a good comparison to the audio quality and the volume of the pickup on the speakerphone compared to talk. Okay, now it's back on talk. I'm going to hang up the phone using the end button. Message three. Okay, now I'm going to hang up into the base. Message four. Now it's time to check out the speakerphone. Okay, so the phone is now uh, sitting on the table, and I'm speaking at about a foot over the telephone, and the air handler is running right now, so we're going to have a lot of background noise in the speaker phone. So we won't really be able to tell exactly how good the pickup is, but we'll be able to get an idea of how well it works. It sure will be nice to soon have a quiet studio. Okay, now I'm about two feet away from the telephone. I'm going to keep moving back. This is approximately three feet away from the telephone. And this is approximately four feet away from the telephone. And as I often say during these recordings, this is right about where I would expect it to still work pretty well. But if it doesn't work too much beyond this, I won't be particularly surprised. Okay, this is the five feet, the six feet, the seven feet the 8 feet, the 9 feet, the 10 feet, and this is the 11 feet, which is all the way across the room. And it's still picking up at all, which seems to me because the unit hasn't cut off recording yet, then that's pretty good. Of course, there's going to be a whole lot of background noise because of the, the equipment that's running, but if it was quiet, probably would be just fine to be able to carry a conversation over this telephone over an hour. End of messages. I wasn't particularly impressed with the speakerphone pickup. It was okay at like two or three feet away. Probably would have been a lot better if there wasn't so much background noise, but it got kind of quiet after that. But it never did cut off, so I mean, even all the way across the room to still be heard at least quietly is, is definitely above average. There's a lot of speakerphones particularly Panasonic, that would cut off long before that and not operate at all. So overall I'm pretty impressed with the audio quality, particularly on the incoming side. Very, very clear. And uh, it's definitely acceptable on the outside as well. The answering machine is also pretty good. Not that it's really anything to write home about, but for these, a lot of these digits and answering machines, the, the quality is just terrible. These messages didn't well, they weren't lifelike, really. They didn't seem particularly garbled. I didn't have any uh, difficulty understanding what I said on the messages. Okay, so that's going to be it for this telephone, the D1780. Over and out.